<laughs> Hi everybody. Uh, it is Sunday the 28th of November and I started play. Now you're not going to see me because you're going to see my hands like a lot of videos do. Because what happened is I got up, finished everything I had to do this morning and started playing. And my playing involved synthetic worms. So I had no idea what they were, but they came as a gift in the orchid package that took two weeks to get here. And I started looking up what to do with them. I watched a few channels and what they did and how it worked for them. And I believe being every home, every person's way of growing things is a little bit different. I believe that you should experiment and try your own till you get what really works for you. A little bit of what someone does, a little bit of what someone else does. So, I decided to come and play here and I started putting the worms in my little pot because, um, and they're a little wet now because I did have the worms in. Oop, what did I lose? I did have them in for a while. So I laid them all out here, whoops, and um, I assessed them. And they're staying alive, and some have new shoots, but when I look, they're quite dry. They're quite dry. All of them are quite dry. And although they're staying alive, kind of like that stall, staying alive, they're not thriving. Okay, so I started to put wet the worms and put them around. I thought, you know, I should do this right because I kept saying if I did it again, I would put the little uh, maiden leaf fern, maidenhead fern, I'd put it in a pot and I hadn't. I just put it over the drain hole. So that wasn't such a good idea. And then they have these nice little pots from Roehampton Orchid that the, they came in. And I picked up the dirt and I put the plant in. I am going to use some worms around the surface because they like moist and they don't like to be too bright. But you'll have to get used to the bright part. Slowly. Now if I put this pot over the center where the drain hole is, and I put a screen over the drain hole. It has tiny little legs, and it'll set up high enough that the rocks won't, I have pebbles in the bottom with fine bark, but they won't, they won't go in and clog up because they can't get there. So I decided, that's how I wished I'd done it, so I thought, well, I'm going to go back. Now I'm going to do this video today, November 28th, and then I'm going to wait a week and I'm going to check them again and do a little video. We'll see if there's improvement or it's worse or how it's going. So I have about a, oh, I have about a half an inch of pebbles and fine bark in the bottom. And I pre-wet the, the worms because I was playing. You know, sometimes you don't think about a video and you just start playing. So um, I'm try I was trying to decide just how to go about this. And so I think what I'm going to do is it seems that um, if I'm going to use these every watering day, I soak it real good rather than try and mist or anything. That should keep the worms dry, uh, wet. But we don't want to be probably watering more than once a week or heavily misting the surface because these will hold water. So I'm going to place a bunch of little worms around the little pot. <laughs> this, it's actually quite fun and I love the pot. I love the idea of the pot. 
it's just it's not thriving and I want it to thrive so there I've sprinkled some around the whole outside of the pot now I'm going to take some and I'm going to put them in the pot now it's probably taking up about a third of the top layer so that way I can keep my eye on how they are doing and this way the fern will stay moister because it has no bark it has dirt at the bottom and then it just has the worms at the top now some people do not like the look of it uh, of the worms and I could put a thin layer of bark on the top but I think um, I think the fern I'm just going to leave like that so now I have some I'm going to put a little bit of the and the bark was quite dry except at the bottom because the hole didn't drain that well because the dirt from the, the uh, maidenhead fern was over the hole. So this should improve drainage too. I'm liking this pot and I did try a lot of these mounted and they never, they just stayed too dry. And I did see some people that actually mounted in the our worms are short, but apparently they also come long and you can put them onto a bark mount by using them. So first we're going to take, um, get the right, okay, this is seagull crawfish pie, I think this one. And yeah, it got some new sprouts, but only where a teeny bit, the bottom was quite dry nothing rotten just quite dry so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to first wrap it a little bit I'm going to wrap it a little bit in some worms I don't want it to be too and I'm going to put it in the corner here so it's basically going to have some worms wrapped around it because this is called synthetic moss and I never knew it. Apparently I've seen videos where it was around from like 2015. So uh, not been real popular I, I didn't think but We're ready for an experience. Now, Ferrella retacrella, she is dry and I've had, she was so good the first year I had her and then she just went downhill. Tiny little flowers, very pretty, should be spreading out way faster. So I'm going to put some worms, let me see, I got two big ones. I think I'll put this over to the side in between. I'm going to put a bunch of worms and I'm actually going to set her on like a bird's nest of little worms. <laughs> so there she goes. Now, apparently these worms when they dry out, dry up, they don't actually hold the moisture um, when you go to water them again unless they're getting a good soaking. And this is why I'll do them only on watering day. So I have a lot of um, worm. I think I'm going to run one worm across the top there and then um, this corner here Let's see, I think I'll put, this is Faf Hung Shine Macbeth. Okay, now, she's been staying alive, but that's all. That is all. She's alive, she's not flourishing, and this is what I don't like. So, we're going to put a few worms under. Not as many as with Herella Recticala. Then we're going to put her there. 
and now this is I'm not going to be talking about this orchid for a while it'll be on my counter and and it'll just be a little secret that when I do the video checking each time I'll join all the pieces together and uh, take it from there okay I have quite a bit around and now I'm going to put some bark on the top. Now this bark has pebbles and it has some charcoal and it has, does it have lava rock? I don't see any lava rock. No, just pebbles. Okay, so this one was quite dry. I think I could put a couple more. So this will be interesting. So what's going to happen is definitely going to hold more moisture than the bark. Now, you, you see, with my fells, they love to dry out. As long as they've got a decent humidity around them, they're doing excellent. So on this side, you know what? i got to get some more worms. Hold on. Put the bag up. Have a little spot under my sink. We'll get the bag and we need some water. <coughs> this is something I was just gonna start. I just I wasn't even planning it. I just started it. <laughs> that's how that's how things happen. So then I thought, oh, I should. So here they are. So they sent us these, and I'm glad they did. They, they have watched a couple of the videos, and they probably know I'm scared to use moss. And they thought, oh, we'll just send her some synthetic moss and see if she likes it. But they didn't say anything. They just sent them. So now what we have here. That was Belle Anna Lerati. That was Seagull Crawfish Pot. That one goes there, and that one goes there. Those are the little name tags. Now we got Pathiopedalum. Now the poor Pathiopedalum. I mean, it was struggling, but not good, not good. So. To me, it seems it'll be quite happy with these worms. So, we'll do that. And I will check once a week because probably uh, just before watering day, I will check because I don't want to water if their thieves are making them. Are they going to make them um, uh, rot? We don't know. We don't know how fast they're going to dry out. So I put quite a few um, worms around the slipper orchid, and that's uh, Paphiopedlum hung shine at back. Okay, that's the right tag. That goes there. Okay, and then we're going to put some bark. This is going to be interesting. Now, I'm not going to miss it. I'm just going to leave them until watering day, which actually, it's, so it's going... Um, this is actually halfway between my watering days. So it's going to get checked halfway. And we'll see how they're looking before I water. Okay. So now we have the poor baby off the long monopodial stem. It's just been struggling. When I cut that huge long stem off of my oldest fell, it took a shock and um, there was no leaves. It was just it was just a couple little roots. That, there was no leaves, no little leaves, no nothing, just a couple roots. 
And it hasn't improved a lot other than it did start to grow this plant. So, we're going to wrap it up. There's a spot where it wasn't very good. We're going to wrap it up and we're going to put it. Notice that the bottom part is drier and there's no worms down there so that it can, uh, it can drain. And the top, which normally dries quick here, I won't be misting it. So I got all the worms. There's another one. Kind of funny things. Okay. Okay, now some bark. Parella reticala. She's kind of... I think I shouldn't have one over the top. There, we'll just do that. It'll be a little extra kind of messy job for a while while I check and redo and check. But that's what I want to do. And uh, it's winter. We got a few things coming up and once that's done then... Okay, it's not noticeable. And let's see how it goes. So before I shut down Herella Retricella, that is right here. Just uncover her a bit. She's got a little bark all over her. Okay, so I'm going to give you a close-up and I'll be back sometime around watering day. So we're going to test it at if watering day is Wednesday and today is uh, Sunday. Then we got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We'll just take a little check at a couple of them. Um, probably won't need watering, but we'll check and see how they look on Wednesday morning. If they're still, those worms are still wet or if they're dry, and then I won't water. So I'm a little off my watering schedule, but we'll deal with that. So I love the pot, I love the idea, so we're just gonna. So let me just take this off here. Okay, now. Take it right off the thing. So here we go. You can see where the pot is with the fern, and it just has the worms. I'm not hiding them. I don't think they look awful. And of course, this is the fell off my old fell. Here's your slipper orchid with next to nothing for roots. So we'll see how she does. And here's um, uh, Belle Anna Lerati Sucrati. And over here we have Crawfish Pie. So we're going to see how they do. I love the idea. I wish I had left the fern in the pot to beginning, but actually this is nicer than the pot it was in. It does have drain holes all around, which I like because I have it in mostly the worms. So uh, the whole pot will drain better and we'll get back to you. So uh, this will be interesting. Bye. This is December 7th and we're doing an update on the worms. So uh, I took most of the worms from down low and I'm going to have them just on the top. I'm going to stay with them. And there was some wrapped around here and I, there might be a couple small little ferns starting to grow here. A couple green ones, which there wasn't, so I suppose that's good. Now let's look at these individually. So I had put the worms underneath and let's just see what we find. 
Okay, nothing's gone rotten, so that's a good thing. Um, as far as growth goes, um, I don't see anything more. There is some new ones right in here, but they were there. And a tiny little shoot trying to come. So, I mean, this was the healthiest one of them all. So, I know it's, it's not that good to always be disturbing them. And that is, this is Fel Anna Lorati Socrati. And um, I thought she seemed a bit better. So, um, this is how she looks. There's one tiny new root coming right there. And the rest, probably no new growth um, that I can notice anywhere else, but one new root. And so I haven't seen a lot of progress on those. Now this is the baby I've been trying to grow for two years. It was There was no leaves on this piece of stem from the old orchid. And I, I just hoped that I would get some. And, and this is all I've got over time. And um, I'm not seeing anything too exciting. There's not enough good roots there. So that part's not going too good. And this is Herella reticella. And she actually started to perk up some little leaves, so she's liking that extra moisture because, as you can see, she was quite dry. So, I think I'm going to keep going, but I'm going to take half of the worms out, <laughs> and I'm going to put the bark back and the plants back. So, I will... Um, they're, they're still kind of damp, so... I think what I'll do is just not have near as much. <laughs> but I've never used them before, so it's kind of an experiment, and that's for sure. Now, um, there, and then I'll just put the plants in with some bark around. And I did have some worms wrapped around here, and I think that was helping. So there is dirt in the bottom. And it does drain because it's in one of those Roehampton little uh, pots. So I don't want to put it, pack it too tight, but just maybe a little more. They, it seems to be liking it. So, no bad signs there. So let's try that. And then what I will do is just place these in spot like so. So one there and let's see this is a drier area. I think I'll dig a little hole here. Maybe I need one more worm in here for this one. So, I'm just going to keep checking and doing this until I decide how they're doing. And nothing's ever instant in the orchid world except death, maybe from freezing. <laughs> so, so here's a spot. Let's see, I a spot that's quite moist So for this one. So let's put it close in here. So I think that'll be good. And whoops, there's a dry one. So I think that seems to like a little more moisture around it. And then we have the fell, which I don't want too moist. Let's see. Maybe in here. 
We're keep trying. And then I'll fill in with bark. And uh, I think mostly bark. There's just the poor little slipper orchid. Not much for roots. Okay, let's see. Maybe we'll stick it in there. Then, whoops, that's a dry one. I should probably put a wet one. They're not, they're damp, but they're, I wrung them out, so. Okay, then I'll just fill bark around the top. And we'll leave it again for a while and see what happens. with my hand and kind of a one hand job here. Okay. Maybe I thought I was going to use less worms, but there's a dry one. Okay. See, if I have them on the top, these ones are drying quicker, but not as fast as just the bark. So I'm thinking near the surface, it's, it's not, uh, they go deeper, it's drier. So. Oh, that one needs a little moisture around it. What we need is the growing season, and it's quite a while before we come to the growing season. We got a six months of winter animals. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I'm just going to fill this all up with bark and put the little name tags back. And uh, we'll check again in about a week. Hi, everybody. We've just finished lunch and now it's time to spend some time with you. And today is the last of a series you've probably already seen the other videos of an experiment I was carrying on about the little uh, artificial moths, they're kind of wormy, woolly things that I got from Roehampton Orchids. And I've been giving it some time and seeing how it works, as you've seen in the last two videos. Today we're going to check up on everything and see if we will continue the experiment on and uh, we'll just be showing you when we do show our other orchids. Now, it was watering day for me today and behind my calendar I keep my schedule and, and if I've sent you one it's the same one you have today was week one for me and also just inside I keep this just behind my calendar on the fridge and just inside I have a running thing so I don't forget what day of the week I'm on so today was week one and it was black tea with the cow mag cow mag is every day not a lot but I like to go with a quarter teaspoon to a gallon for the fertilizer and everything in it. It works very easy. You don't get mixed up. So I do have some soaking because everything's been watered and they love their black tea day. Everything's been watered but the experiment because I wanted to take everything out of here and uh, see how it's doing so nothing has been watered so uh, first with I like to put sometimes something heavy in just to there's a little worm and it's dry because it's watering day today and I haven't been fussing it's been getting once a week and then if I give it anything halfway through the week it's a mist for this because it's quite, it, it, it's shallow, 
so it drains quite fast, but there's only one drain hole. So I'll take that off because I've been using it for weight. And we'll look at the first one. So the bark is dry on the top. We're going to go into Fel Anasarati Sokati. She's a mini fell. And I got her years ago from Roehampton Orchid. She's never flowered. So I'm pulling her out. And around her is some of the worms. And this one is slightly, slightly, if I squeeze it, I can feel some moisture in it. So I've had these uh, around the root area. And I have quite a little hole in the bark where it's been, it's been sitting. So I want it, I'll show you up close how it looks. Now it's not the growing season, but I do see some little tiny new root growth there. And it's not the growing season, so I think that's a good sign. And there's nothing rotten. Um, this is an old root right here, and yes, it it definitely, I see, and that's what I like to do, especially with something that doesn't have a good rooting system. So, um, let's see how the rest are. There's another. So maybe if I'm putting those worms in, is keeping things a little too damp. Uh, not disastrous, and these are some of the older roots. So everything else looks good, and we have this one nice root. Notice it's near the surface, so I can't say that it has anything to do. Same with this new root coming out. So I can't say that, uh, you know, over time that we've been looking at this, maybe a little bit of the worms in there but not too close not too close to um, the roots and when I dip down in there in the bottom like if the roots were growing down I do still feel some dampness down there because this pot only has one drain hole so I'll give it a little soak in the black tea mixture here <laughs> Just, it's going to get this all drenched over it after. So, it's not the growing season, so I do have hope that in the growing season, we're going to see a lot of growth. But, but um, if you're going to use those worms, don't put them, keep them near the surface, not down low. That's sort of what it's looking like. The rest is just bark. And I'm going to put that bark back. And so near the surface, you'll notice, well, I've noticed that near the surface, they do dry out quite quickly. And it does help, you know, when you put moss on the top of your pot just to help keep some unity, it does do that. And I would say the safest place to use these, at least with my experiment, is on the surface where they're not in contact with a lot of roots, but they're going to dry out quicker. Not deep, not wrapped around the roots, at least on this one. So I'm going to soak some in some black tea. Now these are just, I'm going to put three on the surface. And we'll be watching them over time, but I like this uh, arrangement because they're they're tiny orchids anyway, and they're just ones that have been an issue for me. So, um, I can't say that was altogether bad or anything. And I think they're good, but if they're holding a lot of moisture and they're wrapped too close to the roots, I think you could lose your roots. So, but near the surface... I think probably on a non-watering day, maybe halfway, you could take them and soak them in a little bit of water and put them back. But don't over water because of it. That's easy for 
you know, you think, oh, this plant's dry. And I've done it. I've learned over the years. You know, you, you uh, overthink yourself. And always check the pot if you really, really want to understand how things are doing down there. Check the pot. So, that was that one. Not bad. Not perfect. But it's hanging in there and I'm not about to, to, to quit. And so I do have some worms on the top. And... If I do anything, I, I'm not going to try and soak them with misting because I think um, I like misting the air and sometimes aerial roots. But I don't like to start misting the medium because I think it will travel down and make your pot a lot wetter than you want it to be. Okay, the next one is Path, it's Pathiopetalum. Hung Shine Beth, Charm Silver Bell. This one has never done anything either. So, we're going to take this one out. I have some worms at the top and they're dry. I can move a little bit of the bark over to this side for a minute. Okay, so we're going to take those ones out and see what we got. Okay, I do have some wrapped near the roots, and they're dry. They're pretty dry. This one's damp, and it doesn't have many roots. And I didn't. I do have a few wrapped around where the roots were. It's just been struggling. Always have been. Um, I'm going to show you a close up. We're going to make a nice little hole for it to go back in. So, it lost an original leaf. And I still think... Okay, let's have a look. Oh, that one is soft. That one's firm. That one's not... That's not good. So, having those worms down deeper, that one is okay. So, this one is struggling. I think I'll leave this leaf on for now. But boy, there's this one was not good, but if you watch the other videos we've been watching. So definitely, even in bark, these, you're going to have to be in a very dry situation to put these deeper into the medium. Because our humidity has been in the 40s. We've had very freezing weather. So, um, at the surface, I think it helps encourage some upper root growth. And there's some in other parts of the pot, this poor little thing. But what I'm going to do is put some bark back in there. I'm hanging on because the growing season is coming. And I'll make sure that you always know what I've what I've done, what I'm thinking works, because this is kind of a new situation in this pot. But I have tried so many other ways with these particular ones, and uh, not a lot of success. So for me, if I use these worms, I'm thinking not wrapped around close to the plant, but near the surface. Whoops, that one goes there. That one's her name tag. So I might put uh, two, but in a distance on the surface with a little bit of bark on top. So I know they don't like being disturbed, but it's a learning process. And this is the only way you can learn, whether it's your slipper orchids or or uh, something else, you have to look in the pot. Once you know you've got the situation how you want it, then that's okay. Okay, so onward. Now, Herella Retacrella, when I first got her, she was, I had her uh, on bark, and I have her mounted with the three other tiny little ones. 
she was the only one that did flower and then uh, it was just too dry with the bark your water hanging in here in a house not in a not in a special room with a special humidity like just here um, when the humidity is 40 or whatever even if it's near a mister I was watering it every day it was a lot of work so since then it's been struggling so let's get her out of there she doesn't have a lot of roots I've got worms in the bottom hoping it will want to grow roots to go down there um, it still looks rough okay let's have a look okay this is what we got. It's very dry. Keeps staying very dry, and I've tried misting her a lot. She has some new roots, but nothing new in the bottom at all. I mean, she's just staying alive, like that song. She's just staying alive. There is some new shoots at the top. So, there we go again. So, as far as the worms go, <laughs> Down at the very bottom, it has helped keep some moisture down there. And usually that would, when the moisture's near the bottom, would help those roots to head down looking for more moisture. But it hasn't happened. Um, she's been looking like this a while. I'm putting her back. And I'm going to put just a couple roots on, a couple of these worms on the surface. Only because they do hold the moisture a little bit longer than the bark, but not near the roots, not down low. It doesn't seem to be working for me. If you've tried this, and let me know how you have done with these little worms. So, that's Herella retrocella. Now, we're working our way around, and... We're going to move some of this bark over. Hey, no barking, Maggie. Okay, let's take... This is... When I cut the long uh, monopodial stem off the bottom of my oldest orchid because the root system was like this long, it wouldn't fit in pots anymore. You didn't see a lot of people doing this. I hated to do it, but I left the top for the plant. She got the, the greenery. Um, down below, all I had was the root system. And finally, what happened was I, I grew a bit of a root system. And uh, it's been very slow. Uh, oh, tried many things. Tried the moss, tried the moss in a bag, tried the moss in a plastic bottle. I did a lot of things, but there was no leaf structure at all. There was just, there was just, um, just the root. So she did grow through leaves, and you can see I've had some worms wrapped around the top. And, uh... I'm just going to pick them off. Now, here's what we got. And it's not the growing season. I still have hope that come spring, these will take off. But there is a new growth coming here. I've had the worms at the top to keep that bark on the top moist. There is some growth showing here. There's no rot, but here you can see the stem. This is the original stem that had no leaves. It had nothing, and I just waited and waited, and two leaves grow. But it's been fairly stagnant since then, but not real unhappy because it is trying to grow. It is trying to grow. So <laughs> there we go again. I have some of those worms down near the bottom of the pot. I notice there's moisture down there, even when it's watering day uh, today. So uh, the pot is heavier, and it is terracotta, but it's enamel, so there's no evaporation taken through. But it's shallow. It's shallow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a nice hole for it, 
and I'm going to put it back. Now this is where you think, oh, they're, they're sad ones of mine. I should water them more. This is a mistake. This is a mistake because you could keep the air humid around it. You could miss the air around it. Or if you must, halfway to watering day, you could wet some of these and put them back on top of the bark. Or just under one or two pieces of bark. So um, that's where you can make your mistake because they're better off dry. And when they get used to being dry, then they become very hardy. So I still have hope. I still have hope. The leaves are firm. The leaves are, seem to be doing fairly well. So I'm soaking a couple of these in some black tea. Plus it will get poured through with some black tea when I'm done. So um, that's from my watering schedule. Someday I'll go through the watering schedule again with you for those who use it. I use it religiously and I have, I, I don't remember even from when, a long time ago. And I follow it. I don't do many things like, I'm not a person that keeps a list or does things all the time like that, but I do. I do follow my water schedule. Sometimes I miss a day or two and water the next day. Or if I know I won't be here for a few days, I'll water that day and just leave them. So even if you see it look, gives, miss the air, try not to water. My small pots have been getting about a small egg cup of water on Sunday, and my watering day is Wednesday. They're very small pots that seem to dry out quicker and the ones in the little uh, cocoa baskets. So anyway, the leaves are firm. They're standing up. I think it's fairly happy. And I'm going to put a couple of these, oh, there's a long one, <laughs> on the surface. So if it's too close to the roots, you're going to probably run into problems. And you could just wet us some of these and put them back on the surface where they're not dripping into the medium but they're adding a little humidity to that top, top surface. Okay, we've been almost, we're getting there. I have a lot of things in here. So the next one is a sea, seagull crawfish pie. Sea seagull crawfish pie. So we'll get her out. She came the same time I got her from, uh, I got her from, they're not in business anymore, but from the coast. Um, so we'll have a look at her. And it's the same thing. I have some worms further down. Um, everything smells okay. There's a little moisture fur down. That might encourage root growth more so come spring. So let's have a good look at this. Okay. This is... She's never flowered. She's never done anything. Um, there is some nice growth. You can see here some, some new growth. And in here, there, there is some sign of some, these roots, um, let's see. Well, no, these roots, I'm going to say they're not any good. They're old roots. Um, Let's, let's say those ones are no good. I don't want anything to be in there just causing troubles. So you don't want too much moisture. And to me, it's been looking like the worms are good for keeping that top surface a little more humid. Now everything else, let's see. Okay. I leave these because it does help give it a little more firm support. No, you don't want anything moist too down below. It can grow down to it. And I think I should be checking them for a while because I did lose some top ones. So, so as far as the worms go, I see some new roots in there. Um, 
So, it's not looking like, for me, that these worms do good down inside the medium for any of them. But yes, I think it's helping with some new growth on the surface. So we'll give it a little soak and some tea. It's going to get a run through anyway. And there is a little uh, lava rock in here, just lava rock and bark. So we're going to put them in there. Now, as you can see, I've taken out quite a few. Those are the ones that were down inside the pot. So if I need more bark, I got bark, so um, a few on the top, I think, it seems to be working. So uh, Roehampton sent them to me free, and so I thought I'd try them. They came with another flower um, that we ordered, so. Um, I had to try. It seems happy in there. I don't think that's the problem. There's so little anyway. So, okay. So, that was sea seagull crawfish pie. And to the last one, except for the fern, and we will look at the fern. The last one is Fel Anna Lerati Socardi. There's one that's on the top here, and there's another one on the top here. And we'll take out the little name tag. There's not much root, so they're just sitting on the surface. But I do have to pick some bark out so that... You know, that dryness, it, it, it does encourage them. We, we so often with our plants think... We have to water them when they're, when they're sick or sad. It, it's more humidity, and, and they will go and search for it. So let's have a look at this one. Okay, we do have a new root growing here. These roots are firm, but they've all been, here's an old one, they've all been near the surface. These older roots from the original plant, they're, they're not good. These ones are all firm. The plant seems good. There's a tiny little root coming here. So we're looking at the same thing. No little worms deep in the media, but along the surface it seems to be helping them to uh, send out some roots. I didn't give it a little soap. Oh, well, it's going to get it poured on. And then I will not water it for a week. The only thing I will do, watering day, even though it's shallow, it's shallow, but there's more of them in there. And this, this terracotta has such an enamel surface, it's not drying out like a normal terracotta pot. So it's more for, for looks. So... Now, I'm not getting too carried away with these worms. Now, these, these were orchids that, as you saw in the other videos, they, they were suffering. But uh, these, if you just pick them off the surface, there is an odd one still down there because I haven't emptied everything out. But we've been all around, and we've checked everybody. So we're just going to hope that come the growing season, and they're in the window over here, so they're getting lots of light now. Now, in the center, and I don't want to pick it out, but what I do need to do is, i got some scissors here. I'll use these. There's some ferns that are not, hang, or some, I mean, it's been here quite a while. These uh, maidenhead ferns, they, they prefer a little more darker um, situation. Uh, but they, over in the north window, we are getting light from up above because there's glass on the top and from around. It's not as hot an area, 
and I just wanted to see how it would do. And I have worms wrapped all the way around and I do have some growth coming. I'm going to take these dry, I think because of the light over here now in the window, it is encouraging some growth. And when I water it, it'll stay warmer. But uh, I think what I will do is get the camera and give you a close up of that before we go because I'll be joining these to the other video and it'll be long. So I'm going to show you up close what's happening because <laughs> it's just waiting, waiting because I think this fern is trying to grow and I'm just going to give it some time. So let's see here. Okay. Down in here, there is some little growth coming. And there's not just one or two, there's quite a few. So um, you can see I have some worms on the top, but not down below anymore unless some escaped me. I'm happy with this, and I think in the growing season I'm going to see some big changes, but we'll keep our eye on it. Um, but as far as the worms go, a surface preparation, and don't go misting them. Take them out of the pot, put them in some water, sh drain all the water out and put them back. <laughs> so uh, these are my twins. I am so proud of these ones. They are, they're doing the same thing. This one has three flowers and buds. This one has three flowers. Over here we have this branch. And over here we have a branch coming. And I think there's another branch coming in here. So we have one for sure coming here. I think one there. And not sure here. So they got their black tea today. So very happy. Very happy being in this pot together. And uh, they love the traffic cones. Look at the roots. And this one here is just getting ready to, to start opening. And uh, we got moon glow down here. But I think now I'm sad because this is the one that grew right out over the furnace and dropped three buds. My fault. The other ones are coming quite nice. This is the pot I just repotted. It had a bud when I repotted it and it opened. I think they're going to be very happy. So uh, that's it for today. So see you next time.